Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. I'm your host Maryam Shabir and you're watching program follow up. Today we'll talk about bilateral relations of Pakistan with Canada of course. And we'll talk about uh, their policies, their trade and uh, terrorism and all other uh, mutually uh, mutual areas where uh, both countries are cooperating or will be cooperating in the future. Uh, we have with us uh, Canadian High Commissioner uh, Ms. Wendy Gilmore, thank you very much, Your Excellency, for your time. Uh, I am very keen to uh, learn about uh, this policy, which is feminist international assistance policy initiated by Canada. Would you like to uh, tell our viewers that how this is different from the earlier policy which Canada was following? Absolutely. Well, thank you very much again for the opportunity to be here. It's my pleasure to be here with SDPI. Um, and to talk about Canada's international assistance policy, which is a feminist international assistance policy. We also have a feminist foreign policy, which really at its core means that we put the rights of women and girls and their economic opportunity and their um, freedom of choice and freedom of expression at the heart of what it is that we're doing internationally. So uh, our, our Minister of, of International Development has said, and I believe, women and girls can change the world. There's some great songs along that front. Um, and in so doing, we realize that in order to achieve the sustainable development goals, in order to achieve the development outcomes that we, we want, all of us globally, we need to address the rights and the issues impacting women and girls and what's preventing them from taking their rightful place in society. Mm -hmm. So that talks about uh, issues respecting human dignity, it's growth, women's economic empowerment, it's about how climate change and environmental action impact vulnerable communities and women are one of the most vulnerable women and girls one of the most vulnerable communities it talks about inclusive governance which means that women have to take their rightful place they should form 50 percent of the population 50 percent of our elected officials and others should really be women and it means ensuring that women have a voice in peace and security if women are not included in peace processes, for example, if they're not included at the core of our security agenda, then we are missing out not only their very useful and helpful views, but we're not addressing their real needs. Mm -hmm. Thank you uh, for explaining very comprehensively about this feminist policy which can Canada is opting. So has this policy changed the way Canada used to uh, interact or cooperate with Pakistan or will be changing in future? Yeah. I think it's, it's not so much of a change as it is an evolution. Mm -hmm. So like any development program, we have um, projects that are in place for years at a time. So as certain projects are coming to their, their fruition, we're putting in place new projects. And so the new projects we're putting in place, as I said, have at its core the idea of empowering women and girls, um, the, the central tenant of the objectives. But they extend to a, a number of different areas, as I said, you know, it's climate action, it's economic growth, it's addressing health and education, and it's focusing on women and girls and how that impacts families. It also how men and boys engage in that same agenda. So it really is still a very comprehensive development agenda and which is rooted in, I think we want to talk about later, but the sustainable development goals. Yeah, that's great. So uh, I'm just, I just want to link the, the thing uh, with uh, uh, peace and security. Mm -hmm. So how Canada has mainstreamed uh, women and girls uh, into peace and security and what Pakistan can learn out of it? So I think we start initially with the idea of gender-based analysis. So when we are looking at our involvement in uh, peace and security related issues, whether that's um, conflict prevention, post-conflict peace building, um, ongoing peace building activities to increase the resilience of societies. We look at our programming through a gender based lens. Have women and girls been included in that programming? Have we addressed how the issues that are on the table are impacting sometimes disproportionately um, women? And that we make sure that our, any program we put in place addresses their participation in the peace process, their, the impact the peace process will have on them, squarely on, uh, in, a, in a gender lens. That I think is really important. 1325, the UN Security Council resolution on women, peace and security is something which we have embraced. We put at the core of our peace and security efforts. We train our international peacekeepers on gender-based analysis and women issues. And we ensure, as I said, that our programming for peace and security has that solely as its lens. So how uh, Canada is uh, helping Pakistan for uh, women's economic empowerment in Pakistan? Yeah. So we, we have a number of different programs. 
um, projects that are being put in place. One which is, uh, which is going to be um, implementing very shortly is called uh, Women's Voice and Leadership, which we are partnering with Oxfam here in Pakistan to deliver continuing support for women's organizations that will address barriers to women's economic participation, barriers to their taking place um, in the workplace, to ensure that they have access to the training and to the tools that they need to take on a real role in the economy. Um, it's everything from encouraging women's participation in decision-making councils. There's been a series of studies, both globally and nationally in, in Canada, that looks at those companies, commercial enterprises, that have a good um, diversity in their boards of governance. Women's inclusion, minority inclusion, different ethnicities, perform better than companies that have um, non-diverse boards, generally in many cases, lots of old men. If you add women's voices, if you add different minority voices to those governance fora, you will get better economic outcomes. So that's part of what we're trying to do and nice. encourage. Nice. So uh, Canada has a very remarkable history of uh, funds uh, when it comes to uh, non-profit social sector uh, uh, development like uh, institutions in Pakistan like STPI and SACPK, they are also doing great uh, in that as well. So uh, with the passage of time, uh, lately we have observed that uh, there is a considerable reduction uh, in, in that aspect. Mm -hmm. So what are your uh, thoughts about it? So over time, um, the nature of our development programming changes. We were uh, very active in encouraging the development of civil society and governance in years past. We still are. But the type of programming that we engage now is primarily activity-based as opposed to core um, ongoing funding. And that's, I think, very similar to many different donor organizations. We were very pleased to be one of SDPI's original donors. We continue to support SPTI activities. We have been involved, for example, back speaking about women and girls again, in the uh, women's movement in Pakistan over the course of decades, 30 years plus. Um, and we are going to continue to support those efforts. And our latest one, as I said, we have this Women's Voice and Leadership, we have programs to support women's political participation, and we do that in partnership with civil society in most instances. Civil society's engagement on these questions is absolutely critical if there is to be a development and success in that development activity. Yes. So. Uh Coming to trade side, how yeah. do you see bilateral relations between Pakistan and Canada? And uh, uh, in your position as High Commissioner, do you plan to take uh, any initiatives to boost this? Um, so I think you would ask any head of mission here in Pakistan, and one of their primary objectives would be to increase the amount of trade between their home country and Pakistan. And Canada is no different. We have, uh, at the moment, a very successful trading relationship with, with Pakistan. Um, uh, over a billion dollars in two-way trade between Canada and Pakistan every year. We would very much like to see this grow. Um, our primary exports at the moment to Pakistan are agricultural, uh, softwood lumber and logs. Canola is our single largest export. I can wax eloquent on the benefits of canola. And it's a win-win for Pakistan. We export oil seed, canola seed for crushing, and then Pakistani industry crushes the seed, produces the cooking oils. Um, and uh, we'd really like to see that trade grow. Um, we, uh, we have an increasing interest by Canadian investors in the Pakistan economy, and, uh, and while there are still some challenges to investment, this is something which I, I really think has potential. Pakistan has a growing economy, has a very young population, um, has, as we've talked about before, a real interest in clean technology, renewable energy sources. These are areas of expertise for Canada and something that I think we could definitely engage with more with Pakistan. So Pakistan is uh, really trying hard to counter terrorism uh, in our region and we face uh, challenges of course. How Pakistan and Canada can uh, collaborate to tackle this issue? We've been doing a fair amount with Pakistan over the years. We're very cognizant. We, we, we know that Pakistan has suffered the impact of terrorism disproportionately compared to other countries. Um, it has been a, a real challenge here. Um, it's a challenge both for the activities of extremist groups within Pakistan that may export the violence to other countries. It's also very much an impact on Pakistan and Pakistani society. So Canada has had a number of programs uh, over the years to try and help Pakistan. We participate actively with the Pakistani police. 
with the Border Police. We work with the UN Office of Drugs and Crime in a number of different areas to try and ensure um, the technical expertise, the equipment that's needed by Pakistani forces to address terrorism. We also collaborate with Pakistan quite extensively in international fora, in UN bodies, to address the, the scourges of terrorism, to try and ensure that we have a rules-based multilateral approach so that we are consistently addressing terrorism where and when it arises in all countries. When it comes to girls' education in Pakistan, <coughs> many girls uh, in Pakistan brave uh, taboos and stigmas to just to get admission in North American universities. Mm. Uh, one, once they get through it, <coughs> they face challenges of uh, high tuition fees and uh, other expenses and visa restrictions, of course. So uh, in your tenure, uh, are you going to uh, boost uh, uh, girls' education and how uh, more girls uh, from uh, uh, far-flung areas can go to Canada for uh, their uh, studies? I, I think the, the place to start, first and foremost, in Pakistan is to address a real challenge that girls have in accessing education starting right from the primary level and the secondary level. So we have a number of projects in place to try and help girls access the basic education they need. And in particular, where there is a significant drop off in education for girls in Pakistan is between the primary and secondary levels, when girls go through puberty in particular. Families may not want them to go to high school. Their access to the sanitary needs that they need um, women's sanitary products are difficult to come by in Pakistan. That impacts a girl's ability to get to school and to be able to effectively function at school. Um, so we have a number of projects underway with the UN Development Program, with other partners, to try and increase girls' access to secondary education. Moving girls from secondary education into post-secondary, so undergraduate degrees and graduate degrees, and in particular, encouraging girls to get into STEM, science and technology, um, the, the non-traditional areas, is also something that we would very much like to see. We would love to see more Pakistani youth, women and men, but uh, girls in particular, access education in Canada. Um, to do that, the Canadian government doesn't do scholarship programs directly, that's, that's not the type of programming we engage in, but different educational institutions in Canada have their own types of scholarship programs and others. And what we're trying to do in particular is develop partnerships between Canadian education, uh, Canadian institutions of higher education and Pakistani institutions of higher education. And to make sure that those partnerships form a really good basis upon which to select students which have the necessary qualifications and ability to do well in, uh, in post-secondary school in Canada. The visa question I know is very challenging. It is, uh, it is something which not only impacts Pakistan, but frankly impacts foreign students from around the world. We have particular challenges here in Pakistan with a very high proportion of fraudulent applications, which impacts legitimate students and their ability to get through the system. So we're working as, as much as we can with the Canadian immigration authorities, who are solely responsible for the delivery of visa-related decisions, and we're working with educational institutions in Pakistan to try and make sure that when we have students with the necessary financial means, educational background, the right acceptances from Canadian institutions to make sure that they have a real chance of obtaining a student visa in a legitimate way. If, if I can do one pitch, they say, for anybody applying for a Canadian visa, all of the information you need is online from the Canadian government. Try to avoid consultants and people who would want to try and, and sell ability to fast track the system. They are generally not legitimate. Pakistanis who are interested in getting visas for Canada should apply directly themselves. They should go online, find the information they need, and they have a better chance of managing to get the right documentation before a visa officer if they do that. Uh, that's, that's very uh, wonderful clarification <laughs> and in fact an advice also for students. So it's been a while that you're in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want to ask in general that what did you like most about Pakistan? Is it people, food, anything? I, uh, I was really excited to come to Pakistan. I asked to come here. I was lucky enough that, uh, that the Prime Minister and Governor General agreed that I should be High Commissioner to Pakistan. Um, I have to say I was, uh, two things in particular really attracted me on a, on a cultural and, and you know, lifestyle basis. 
I, uh, I love South Asian food in general. Pakistani food is a huge draw for me. I'm doing my best to learn how to cook um, appropriately and, uh, and I'm just really enjoying getting to know Pakistani cuisine and the different regional cuisines. The other part is uh, in my younger, fitter days, I had pretenses of being a, a mountaineer and a climber, mm -hmm. spent a lot of my time outdoors, and I am just so excited to get out and explore the Pakistani landscape. I've had one trip up north so far, I hope to go again. I've been doing as much hiking as I can around Islamabad, and it's a wonderful place if you're an outdoor person. The Margala Hills are a tremendous resource, so I'm, I'm really enjoying that, but just generally, I have found people very hospitable, very welcoming, really connected to Canada. There's tremendous people-to-people -people contact between Canada and Pakistan. We have large populations of each other's people in each country, and, uh, and that's been wonderful to, uh, to be able to discover. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, for your time, and uh, wish you very good luck for your cooking skills with Pakistani food. <laughs> Thank you very much. And, uh, her Excellency just mentioned very rightly that do not get into any uh, consultant or any third person when you're applying for visas, even even tourist or study visas. So uh, just go to online, apply, uh, which is the right thing. Documents are available, as, as Her Excellency mentioned. Uh, with next program, we will come up with uh, another mission. Till then, goodbye.